see you. We can read your comments, all that stuff. But the three of us, disparate places, our own, our own abodes, if you will. But shouldn't affect things. And as always, welcome aboard. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you're watching on War Chant TV. We appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the help and uh, and and letting others. Uh, know where to find us, but also uh, supporting what we do. This hour brought to you, as always, by our friends at Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! We had a new convert this week, boys. Got a new oh. somebody else on the train. Our Ooh. buddy, uh, national champion Keith Cottrell, mm. had, had not really and just had not really checked out the Register phenomena, but was drawn to it. Was in a grocery store the other day, texted me and said, "Hey, I'm not seeing any registers at this grocery store that you told me they would have them." I was like, look, I'll be there in five minutes. Except right. I was in, yeah. I was in quarantine, so I couldn't really. But I, but I was like, I'll, I'll call my goons. We'll take care of it. He looked around a little further. He found them, found the display, got his registered sausage, said it was delicious. So Keith, we're not cutting you in on the uh, sponsorship, but we appreciate we appreciate that we've got another another guy on board. I mean, I feel like Keith's been a loyal listener for a good long while. Why just now is he getting registered sausage? That kind of stings a little bit. Yeah, you know, one thing I found out about sausage is like people. Like it's kind of, it's regional, you know, mm -hmm. it's one of the things we didn't know before we got into this and people are kind of, you know, you grow up on a sausage and you stick with that sausage, right. but we're changing the game. Registers we are. Is, yeah. is just taking over across the Southeast, moving across the country and uh, got one more, one at a time we're converting mm -hmm. the masses. There's two things I've learned here in the opening segment. And I like really both of them. First of all, Ira has graduated to a place where he no longer has to be the heavy hand. He's got people. Right. So people Good. go take care of things. Secondly, I like that Keith has graduated to insisting he be called national champion before you <laughs> right. introduce him. And I, I've always said he should do that. I would, yeah. I would certainly do that. So it's good that right off the bat, we've learned something and both things are positive and we'll continue to win over the hearts and minds of those that are a little unsure of which sausage to choose. If he gets, and I, look, if he gets Jano on board and cuts a little testimonial for us, oh. then I think, now we'll now we'll cut him in, but but uh, for now it's just uh, we're gonna go with the, the word of mouth and the out of boy. Registermeats.com is a website. If you haven't tried it out, be like Keith Cottrell, be be mm. like a national champion. Go yeah. get your register sauce. And by Sorry. cut him in, you mean you'll give him a couple of free links, maybe a pack. Correct. Yeah, it's all coming <laughs> to us. It's all coming to us. He doesn't need well, it. He's a boys, national champion. He doesn't need it. That's true. Uh, boys, it's been an interesting time. We've all weighed in in one form or another on the end of the baseball season. I don't know that we'll belabor it here. Uh, it's a universally agreed upon disappointing end to a disappointing season in what has been a very disappointing two to three year run. Uh, and by run, I mean just uh, stagnant sorriness. Um, and so, you know, when we watch this, we wonder where it's headed. I think that all of us have grave concerns and I can tell that the fan base does too. Uh, I guess we have a chance here, the collective, if you will, the collective as it's known, uh, with seminal headlines. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've all we've all shared our opinion individually, but uh, I guess we should weigh in one more time here for our seminal headline listeners. Uh, nobody thinks that the season was a success. Nobody thinks that that is the level to which Florida State should play. Nobody thinks that's anywhere close to the standard. And I think why, that's true. Why don't, of the why, why don't you speak for yourself? I, I thought you it was don't a think that's true. success. They you, got into the wrote, tournament. You wrote an entire column about it on warchant.com <laughs> saying right. otherwise. So uh, I would I would just say that, again, in addition to all of us noting that it was a failure and frustrating and not to the standard of Florida State baseball, the head coach thinks that too. So now the question becomes what gets done about it, what can be done about it, if anything, at this point, and what are, what are our opinions about what will be done? It, it is amazing that, you know, you, there's a lot of times we've had this conversation a lot over the last 10 years about how interested is the fan base in college baseball, because, you know, it just doesn't seem like it's been the way it was in the 90s. I mean, college baseball, especially at Florida State, seemed to be kind of a, a little bit higher profile than it has been here for a while. And so until you have a season like this and an ending like that and a game like the Auburn game, uh, where you lose 21 to seven, that I think it kind of gets everybody a little bit fired up. The other thing that I think is kind of magnified things, and this is unfortunate, probably to some degree for Mike Martin Jr., is for whatever reason, I mean, the offense is way up in college baseball. These regionals have all been great. And so it's almost like there's been a couple of years there where you're starting to wonder, man, is college baseball just done? Because there just didn't seem to be a lot of excitement nationally. 
this has been really fun this postseason and Florida State's sitting at home. I think that magnifies it a little bit. Yeah, and it also, look, man, we can talk about – he's not in the room. I was going to say the elephant in the room, but the elephant in South Bend, um, that guy has gotten his team to a super regional. That guy had his team uh, top 10 in the country-ish all all season, top 15-ish. They came in here and swept Florida State. I'm talking about Link Jarrett, of course. And, you know, I was looking it up yesterday, Jeff, and I texted Ira this. Florida State committed 30 – what was it? 37 more errors this season than Notre Dame did. And struck out 200 more times than Notre Dame has this season. Those are the two things that I think are are the most frustrating. Me as a baseball fan watching this team. They can't play defense. Jordan Carrion, in my opinion, is maybe one of the most talented shortstops in the country. I mean, he's he's incre- he's got some incredible skills. He had 17 errors. He didn't last year at Florida. So what happened? Alex Terrell. The most he ever struck out at Miami, and he played every day there, was like in the low 50s. This year he struck out 77 times. So what what go? It, so it's not just the, the the kids that he's getting out of high school maybe don't adjust well. It's the kids that have done it at other places, for whatever reason, um, don't don't seem to maximize their potential here, and then sometimes get worse. Jordan Carrion, I mean, he made some plays early on this season where you're like, man, this guy's the next Ozzy Smith. And then he has the lowest fielding percentage on the team, so that's to me that's that's really uh, discouraging, and I and I don't know what that means other than maybe they're really tight, maybe they're all really tight, but they don't seem to play as them be- as their best selves. Yeah, I, think- I, don't, I don't even know if it's tight. You know, to mo- to me sometimes I don't know, Jeff. I, I, sometimes to me it almost seems like there's not a focus. It's 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 not. There might be situations where guys are tight, but I think the base running blunders a lot of times are overly aggressive. The The approach at the plate is overly aggressive. I mean, with two strikes, it doesn't matter. They're swinging out of their shoes. I mean, there's just uh, in a situation where you just got to hit a ground ball on the right side of the infield to get a run home. They don't do it. I mean, those the, to me, it's a lack of focus more than it is being tight. Well, I think ultimately, and, and no matter how much it pains anybody to say it, what we're describing, when you're talking about a team that doesn't run the bases well, that strikes out incessantly, that doesn't walk and has a low on-base percentage, that doesn't communicate, well, and then you want to throw in maybe plays tight, that's coaching, guys. There's no way around it. That's all coaching. Uh, I think that it snowballs. I think that it kind of collapsed on itself at varying points this year. I think that maybe in an effort, uh, to, to pivot away from a certain way of playing or thinking. Uh, they've tried to, to, to do other things, and it doesn't work. It feels like there's a lot of almost flailing uh, going on with this team. Like, if this isn't working, well, let's do this, or let's simplify that, or let's take a different approach. It just feels like to me that he hasn't been able to put his finger on the pulse of his team, and then that in turn has led to frustrating results, which in turn leads to pressing, which in turn leads to desperation. And I think when you see that, you know, it's it's fairly evident when we watch these games. That's not a very cohesive team. It doesn't look like a team that likes playing together. I could be wrong about that. I, I'm not in that locker room. I'm not on that field with them. But they don't look like they're having a lot of fun. And certainly what's inarguable is that the results are unacceptable. And so the results are what matter most. We all have an opinion about maybe why they're at where they're at. But at the end of the day, this is not a program – that aspires to get lucky to get into the postseason only to be bounced in a sub-regional and win one game. And one of those games, by the way, in which you lose, you're humiliated in primetime uh, in a way that you expect teams that you rarely have ever heard of playing baseball get beat in these postseason tournaments because they lack the pitching. Um, you know, this is this is nothing like what we've come to understand Florida State baseball to be. And so ultimately, no matter whose fault it is, it falls at the feet of the head coach. And I think certainly he's well aware of it. Um, you, you you saw a guy at the dais after that game in which they lost, heartbreakingly so, by a run that looked like he was uh, deep in thought, deep in thought. Because I do believe Meat is a realist. I do believe he does not run from the standard. I don't think that he uh, finds this acceptable. And so ultimately, if you're in charge and you're sitting there at the dais having been bounced yet again very early and not look good doing it and not had a good season in, you know, during the regular season, you've got to turn inward and wonder, what is it I'm doing? What is it I'm not doing? 
I think it's the regular season point that is uh, the most concerning to me because look, man, Florida and Miami didn't advance either. You know, they which is great. We're all happy about that, right? That's, Miami that's, losing at home. That's By the, the way, one good. That's the one good thing that's happened for Mike Martin Jr. this week yeah. is that both of those two teams got bounced. But I don't. I, that's why I don't like getting caught up so much in postseason results because those two teams were superior to Florida State by a pretty substantial margin during the regular season. Um, you know, Miami was a national seed. Florida State, Florida got to host. Um, Florida State was a number three seed on the road and apparently was one of the last four teams in the tournament. So these three things aren't the same, and that's what concerns me the most. It's not just the two and four that he's in in the postseason in his career. It's that these regular seasons, like it's one thing to be a national seed and get upset, like the like the softball team did. The softball team still had a great season and a really disappointing finish. This season, this postseason played out just like the regular season did. This is an average baseball team. It's a barely, it's a top 35-ish baseball team right now, 30 to 35 uh, ranking, which it, you know, we're used to it being top 10 every year. And so that's, that to me, how, how, no matter what happened in Auburn this weekend, yeah, they could have saved some face and somehow won that regional. And then all of a sudden, hey, you know, it wasn't bad, you're in a super regional, but it, it wouldn't have been, uh, it wouldn't have been commiserate. Is that what I say? Commensurate? Commensurate with the regular season because the regular season was an up and down train wreck for a lot, large part of it. But and, that's what's and, weird. But that's what's weird about this team, though, is look at their record against good teams. And the Miami team, who you just said had such a better season, they beat them two out of three. Florida, they easily could have beat two out of three. They beat some really good teams this year. What's yeah. weird is, and it gets back to my concerns about lack of focus and lack of just cohesion, is the fact that you had all of the crazy losses in games where they were not competitive and in situations in games where they're not competitive. Almost all been, on the road, almost all on the road yeah, too. And think about some of the guys they put on their, in, on the mound in big situations in that regional were things that we saw this year where guys just didn't compete. That's that to me is the fabric, you know, that when, when me right. looks in the mirror, like you said, Jeff, they, he's got to look in the mirror, figure out what's not working. I don't think it's about talent necessarily. I don't think it's about um, filling holes. I mean, those are important. But I really think there's there's something missing in this team in terms of that com- competing because you, you might not you're going to get on the mound. There's days you go on the mound and you don't have your don't best have stuff. It. Yeah, I mean we've seen it with Parker Messick, but you can compete. There were a couple of guys in that regional who did not want to compete. You could see it when they went out there. Maybe there's something physical going on. I don't know, but that's stuff we've seen throughout the year. And then you see at bats that are not competitive. You see fielding opportunities that are not competitive. That's concerning. I think, again, going back to – you're right to look at the bulk of the regular season as the barometer. I, I always tend to do that because postseason, we know in truncated tournaments, things can happen. You're right to point that out, Corey. Uh, the, the thing of it is, though, as you also pointed out, and we've talked about on this show and on my show and on Wake Up War Chant, and certainly it's been written about on warchant.com, the style of play is dreadful. It's it's yeah. unwatchable. Uh, they don't run the base as well. They don't pick up the baseball. They're absent-minded, to Ira's point. They swing and miss more than every other team in this conference. Without without the power that should go with it. Without like you- the power to go with. So if you're not going to get on base and you're not going to pick up the baseball, and if you do get on base, you're not going to run the base as well, and you're going to swing and miss a lot without the home run bonus. What is it you say you do here? Yeah, what, what, what is there? Like, what do you, what, what, when Meade is going into a, a recruit's home, I don't know. Do they do that in college baseball or are they just meet him at the concession stand during one of those travel tournaments? I don't know how college baseball official visits work uh, or in home visits, but what do you, what do you think he says or his coaches say when, when somebody asks, how would you describe FSU baseball? Like, what is the, what is the core of it? In you transition, know, school- in transition, and we need your talent to help get us over the, you know, over the top. Yeah. But what would y'all um, say is the FSU baseball style of play? Well, it's like weird. Th- these is, last four years, what is it? You know, I, you know, again, man, going back to historically, the program is built on pitching no, and defense. No, I'm not. Ta- I'm talking about oh, well, but I'm recent just saying, historic. I know. I'm just saying. But Mike Martin Jr. was part of that. Yeah, sure. So he, that's where he comes from. But what's weird is he did want to embrace this new approach offensively and kind of get away from. I mean, remember his first press conference? I was kind of shocked. His first press conference, he talked about how aggressive he wants them swinging at the first pitch. I mean, it was almost like all – it was like anti-Mike Martin Sr. Yeah. Well, okay, but do you know how to teach that stuff? Because it seems like right now they're trying to have that approach, but without any without any of the results. So that's weird. Well, you know? we should also note towards the end of the season, the once thought to be dominant pitching staff was anything but. Yeah. Uh, as the season wore on, you had one dependable arm. 
that that was supposed to be a staff self-described by the head coach as perhaps the best in the country with a bunch of major leaguers on it. Yeah. Well, they weren't close. No. Um, I, you know, I, I don't think, I, I don't think they were anything close to what they expected them to be, especially from about the midway point on. And you would want to know why that is too. Now, the problem you get into, I think, and we've hinted at this a little bit, what do you do if you decided to make some changes on your coaching staff if you don't have an extension? I don't know that you can really do that, right? I mean, it's right. a, this is an interesting quandary they find themselves in. You'll almost have to remain status quo change some things philosophically, try to relate to the players in a way that your message gets through, whatever that is, uh, and hope like hell things begin to turn around next year because your talent seems to be with some of the younger players, at least offensively. Because otherwise, I don't know that you can really make changes here without an extension to the head coach. Well, that's well, it, yeah, no, that's a good point. And sorry, Corey, but I just wanted – there's two things with that. One is it is a big deal. I'm not as, big, I'm not as concerned about a long-term extension or any extension for head coach – and baseball for the players for recruiting. That's what everybody talks about with football and basketball. Oh, the players need to know that that coach is going to be there for four or five years. Baseball to me is so transient that I don't think that that's that big of a deal. But to your point, if you want to make a change on your staff, those potential assistant coaches. They're not would, coming if you're a dead man walking. Right, right, 100%. So that, unless it, I mean, it's Kevin Steele and he thinks he's getting your job. But for the most <laughs> part, that's, right. that's, going to be, that's going to be a tough sell. The yeah. other thing that's going to be tough – in this situation right now. And, and so to the point is, you know, if Michael Alford wants to help remedy that and give him an extension, how do you handle that from a PR standpoint? The other thing though, I think it's going to be interesting out of this whole thing is we all know it. We all grew up playing baseball. We've been around it our whole lives. Now your, your sons play it. I've coached it for a long time at the youth level. There are no group of parents who think they know more about the sport their kids are playing than baseball. And they, they, Imagine the opinions of those baseball players' parents, and and you know we're we've heard stories, and and that's going to be going on. So that's going to be another challenge because you're going to have, you know, twenty or twenty five sets of parents who are not happy at all and may want to voice their displeasure, and that is going to could muddy the waters a little bit. Final thing on this, I thought it was intriguing that when Mike Martin Jr. was asked the question about their poor base running and about fielding difficulties, he said, you know, I'm never going to roll a player under the bus, but you explain things once, twice, three times, and you hope it gets through. If it doesn't, that's back on us. So he did take responsibility, but he said that in the, the post-game press conference for the final game of the year. Yeah. He understood that that was a fair question. He has to be thinking long and hard about why is it what I'm teaching them does not translate at all? Or why don't they care? Why don't they care? Why, like, why, why would Tibbs not care enough to know what the hit and run sign is? Why is Ferrer tagging up from second on a pop-up to the second baseman? Why is Tyler Martin getting picked? That's your, dad, that's your son. Why is he getting picked off on a ball that bounces a foot away? And then how is Rank getting picked off? On a, on a on a kind of a sloppy move to first from a lefty, like and that's in just one game. That's not the whole. That doesn't count Terrell and some other stuff we've seen. Um, that just, that's what's so again, man. It, it's like what's going to change? Like I want to see it change. And we 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 thought they were going to be better defensively this year. They weren't. Maybe they were a smidge better, but that's just because they were so bad last year. Basically, it was the exact same offense we saw last year without Matt Nelson. That's all. That so nothing progressed. Nothing progressed from last year to this year. Nothing. It didn't get any better at all. Uh, the strikeouts remained, but you lost the power of Cabell, Martin, and Nelson. So well, you had nothing to fall back on. What's crazy about it, though, is the, what you're talking about, again, what I was talking about earlier, is that lack of edge and competitiveness and, and, and fight that seems to be lacking. That was kind of what Meat was as a player and what he was as an assistant coach and what he wanted to embody in the program, yeah. and that is just not happening. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They weren't mentally tough this year. I don't know how else to say it. They weren't. They went eight and seventeen away from Hauser. Some of them embarrassing losses, like to Stetson, to Mercer, getting shut out by getting shut out by Stetson, losing by two touchdowns to Auburn. Those are those are losing to Boston College, getting swept by North Carolina. All that stuff happened on the road because they weren't in the friendly confines and they just didn't compete. Good news, gentlemen. The twenty twenty two Bill Connolly SP projections are out. Oh, you know, good. You know how much I love these, both SP Plus for around the nation, plus the ACC and predicted Atlantic Division. 
So something for us to go through, and I'll tell you where Florida State was ranked. And, Corey, you, you want me to break down SP Plus for you when we come back? Do you want me please, to do that? Please do. Please do. Take about five <laughs> minutes if you can. It's coming up next, Seminole Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850 Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC 1331204. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue just north of Havana have become your destination for the best food either side of the state line. But what if you want fresh seafood? Say no more. Kenny and the crew have got you covered with seafood so fresh, the only way you'll get it fresher is if you grow a set of gills. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of the last light in Havana. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, open seven days a week. Get your fill at the grill. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Wit & Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Witten's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Wit & Glass, and they provide precise installation. Wit & Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at wittandglass.com. Call 850-222-5781. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano <laughs> Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Water license, CAC 1816-186. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Wildfires and other disasters are becoming a way of life. For many, preparing go bags relieves stress. Tips for disaster preparedness and suggestions for putting together your own go bag are available from FEMA at ready.gov, and you can search go bag on jw.org. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Cl Welcome back. Seminal Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant uh, TV. And Corey, you recall, you recall SP+. Plus. Ira, I know you do. We had some fun with it. But moreover, it's just a fun way to kind of, once again, talk football and get into where Florida State projects to be. Actually, I dare say that if we're going to go ACC, SP Plus kind of projected uh, where we all think Florida State should be and, and, and maybe has a chance to be, and that was third in the Atlantic behind Clemson and NC State. So I don't think anybody's going to have 
Any issue with that, by the way? That's pretty exciting, right? Seems about right. That would be. I think that'd be a solid season. That that seems like a uh, a five win uh, ACC campaign. Maybe six wins. Okay, and we, so well, we've, we've been and we've been asking for getting to the point where you're beating Wake Forest and Louisville again, and that that's what you kind of need to do to separate yourself from those teams in the Atlantic. Yeah, those projections would have Florida State with an offensive ranking coming into the season. Uh, in the top 50 oh. and a defensive ranking in the top 20. Oh. It would also have a team winning on average. This team, uh, the number would be set at seven and a half and the conference win total would be set at 4.6. So okay. yeah, if you're going to take the over there, that's eight win season. That's a, uh, you know, again, a five win ABC season. Norvell should go ask for an extension right now and just show them that. Just bring that in or send the PDF. To offer, be like, look, man, look what I'm doing. S and P thinks we're going to win some games. So SP hey. Plus is Bill Connolly's system on ESPN. For those that don't know it, it judges returning production, recent recruiting, recent history on the field as well. It doesn't account for everything. It's just a measuring tool, but it's a pretty good one over year to year. And it's it's a way to take a look at you know what a team's thought to be coming into the season. He readily admits that there are a lot of things that it doesn't factor. For example, it doesn't factor, for example, a new coaching staff basically at Clemson. <laughs> like yeah. they've lost three major assistant coaches in the last three years uh, between Elliott and Scott and, of course, Brent Venables. So how do you factor that in, right? Not, you may yeah. think that this is a program on the way down because of it, but SP Plus does not factor that. And not just coordinators, but maybe the best defensive coordinator in the country and uh, really good offensive coordinators. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely a useful tool, but what it also yeah. does is, you know, something we've been talking about is, you know, we haven't given Mike Norvell and the staff a pass in the last two years, but we have explained that there are a lot of issues they've had to deal with. This is a year now where, okay, man, you've got a lot of guys back. You've done really well in the transfer portal. You have returning experience everywhere. You kept your staff together. You don't have a lot of inexperienced players playing. You should have the cohesiveness, the culture, all that in the right place. And now you got to go win games. So what it does also is it kind of removes – you know, any of the excuses or many of the excuses, because this is a team that should be in that ballpark. It should be a team that wins about eight games, goes five and three in the ACC, doesn't get embarrassed. And maybe, you know, and if, it, if they knock off a team or two that are not expected to, which is possible, then you maybe could have a really even in, in, an even better season. Yeah, I mean, if they just play like they did the last two months of the season, right? That's that's what we're asking this season to be. Like if you just flush September of last year, this was an s and you know, seven and a half, eight win team. You know, they won five of their last eight. Two of them were by a field goal on the road at Clemson and Florida. So, and the other one, Jordan Travis didn't play. So I, I feel like they, they, that's what they can be, even if they don't get any better, that they, they're good enough to do that. The, the other projection on SP plus to note, if we're looking nationally where Florida state comes in and we remove them, you know, just, we're not just solely looking at the ACC is uh, they come in at 28th nationally. Coming guys, into the we're season. That's high cotton, guys. We're, we're top 30. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they come in. They come in 28th. They're just ahead of uh, Nebraska and Louisville, and they are uh, just behind Iowa and Arkansas. Suck it, Huskers. Sorry. Sorry. Good hire there on with Frost. You're, they won, what are you, 30th in the that's SP? Well thought of, that's as well thought of as a three-win team can be, my friends. Uh, yeah. Nebraska won three games a year ago. <laughs> now they, but they were close, right? Didn't they lose a lot by of like close. a, like a, lot of a close. field goal in five different games? Uh, yeah, man, I, I – yeah, they, if they could be top 30, like I know that's not what we want. We say that all the time. Or I say it all the time. That's not what we grew up with. It's not what you guys watch this show for is to cheer for a top 30 football team. But two years ago – it was bottom 30. It might have been bottom two. It was just disgusting. And so in, in two years, if you can make those strides up uh, to be a top 30, seven, eight, eight win bowl team playing close to New Year's Day, well, that's a nice step on your journey back up the mountain. Eight wins, Ira. We're all going to be happier than hell and feeling good. You know, that's the thing, man. I, I do think uh, you know, again, when you talk about it, uh, there are certainly some people who, when they hear any talk of like, oh, this could be a much better season where you win eight games, there are a lot of people who really want to get back to where Florida State, they believe it belongs and should always be. Um, but I think people who are realistic, yeah, I think most people are. I've also had some interesting conversations lately. I'm curious what you guys, as you talk to other people around the fan base, like I've had a lot of people tell me how excited they are about that LSU weekend. 
which is cool, man, because there hasn't been a lot to be excited about Florida State football in quite some time. So the fact that people are excited about that game and making reservations and complaining about how expensive it is and, and all of that, that at least people are seeing some signs of some reason for optimism because there are some people who don't see any. And are, how much are, of that, though, is New Orleans being excited for New Orleans? Like if this game was in Orlando, maybe it's not – you're not uh, having you can, those so many conversations about it. It's probably a part, but, man, you can go to New Orleans whenever you want. It's six hours away. Um, people are excited about that game. I think people are legitimately excited about that game in that weekend. The venue's part of it, um, but I think part of it's the fact that they're playing a team that seems possibly beatable where LSU is right now in, in a state of transition. There is some reason for excitement about this Florida State team. So it's like, okay, this could be a chance to actually have a fun weekend where you actually win a football game against a team that matters on prime time. That I think that has some people so pretty fired up, and that's and we're in June. So I think the excitement is going to start to crank up, which is, again, man, we just haven't had it. You get the best of both worlds with that game because you get a team in name that is right. very significant, but one that's in transition and obviously a new coaching staff coming off a terrible season. By the way, just for the record, again, it's not the be-all, end-all. LSU is 36th in SB Plus coming into the season. So Florida State's ranked ahead of LSU in that particular ranking system. Um, they, they have LSU trending very much in the wrong direction. Again, doesn't account for coaching staffs and the impact you think they're going to have, and they have a new one at LSU. So obviously take account to that. But yeah, it's a winnable game against a name-brand team out of the biggest and most powerful conference in all of college right. football, and it happens to be in a venue in New Orleans that most people, at least for a weekend, find absolutely attractive to go visit. So – it's the best of all things. You get to go and drink and gamble and have fun and eat great food and experience different culture, which is awesome. And you get to play a game against a name team who you actually have a legitimate shot at beating. And I'm excited about the craps table. So, guys, I don't yeah. know if you know this. The last year I've tried to become a craps aficionado. There's a lot of stuff, Myra. I don't know if you've ever played it. It's uh, it's ridiculous. It's really hard to keep track of all the bets you can make. Yeah, it's impossible. And and I'm always intimidated by it because you just feel like you're going to go make an ass of yourself. That's what I'm saying. Because you're not going to know what's going on. In New Orleans, at least the last time I went at, at Harris, they have their – it's like a uh, automated craps with real dice, but you get your own station to sit at. So you're making all your bets without having to throw it over people. Like, hey, give me – 20 on uh, you know hard eight or something you don't have to do that and hold up people because it's it's a huge you just get your own station R. you're just sitting there playing so, craps let me ask you guys this and i know Corey's. i know some of Corey's take because i know his habits in the casino jeff but so i've been you know as any good father i've been spending this summer you know re, re, kind of honing my my daughter's skills at poker um at hold'em because that's what we do around the show fell household smart and then they wanted to learn some blackjack so we've been going over some blackjack tips and, and traits but I don't really like blackjack. To me, it blackjack feels... Blackjack sucks. I hate Thank blackjack. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Corey. I feel like it, it's just... There's there's so... It just feels like... I don't get the... There's not that much strategy. You've got your cards. You're either going to hit or you're not going to hit. You're going to split or you're not going to split. You may double down. But there's just not... Poker, man, there's a lot more going on. But where's... where's there's the, where's, a lot where's, where's more going thing? on. I will only interrupt to say that the percentage-wise most winnable of the games of which we speak is indeed blackjack. So if you'd like a better chance and better odds of winning, the money, winning money while you're gambling, blackjack is where you want to go. Now, Corey is going to go over there and play craps, and he has no idea how to win, and he's going to get his ass taken That's again. That's not true. I know and what I should so be doing. It just never works out for me. But he'll tell me how much fun he's having. Right. I'll win – a boring game like blackjack and take home thousands of dollars and, and really you're not winning thousands of dollars of blackjack. Oh, but he's, also, he's, playing, he's playing the hundred dollar table. Well, he might be, you're at the, you're in the high roller table. Corey, so Corey, the last time I was in Vegas, I took home over $5,000 in blackjack. Don't start. Wait, did with you, me. Hey, did you tell the, did you tell the IRS about it? But, but did you have fun? Don't you worry about what I did or didn't do. Corey? <laughs> did We're you, not... did you, did you have fun? Yes. Like, Yes. Like, you know what I like doing, Corey? I, I, I like winning. I like winning lots of money, buddy. Like, That's a lot of fun for me. All to I me used to do was play blackjack because I was so intimidated by the craps table because it makes sense. It's just a, it's so loud. It's like a its own club scene over there. You don't know what you're doing. But blackjack, number one, the dealer always flips over a 10. Always. Always. Well, you have to expect that. And if the dealer flips over a six and I double, and I double down on my nine or whatever, I'll get a four. The dealer will flip over a five. <laughs> 
an ace and then a nine and hit 21. Oh, isn't this fun? This, uh, I mean, it just, it's, it's, uh, it's just mind numbing and I always lose. So that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, I am a cop, Bobby. I just want to know you a big man winning $5,000. I hope some of us, some of us taxpayers, some of the uh, country got some of that. Corey's holding me accountable for my winnings. The, the, the best the cosmopolitan six years ago. <laughs> The best uh, game for me around blackjack is trying to circle and circle and circle until I can find a seat at the five dollar table. I just can I get can I get Buddy, at a cheap yeah. table? I can tell you this: in New Orleans that weekend, you're not going to get a five dollar table. You you might get a twenty five dollar table or a, a ten be, if you get there at eight in the morning or something. Driving back to Mississippi, I'm going to try to I'm gonna try <laughs> even to find then, me man, a five dollar table. They don't have the five dollar tables, Ira. I don't know why. I love there'll be them like too. one. There'll be like one table. Yeah, and there's 40 people around it, like waiting for the old lady to have to go to the bathroom because she's been there for six hours. I'm not and trying then to shove her to the ground and pounce on that seat. It's yeah, just throw me my green, get my green chip. I'm not trying to my lose red a, chip. I'm not trying to lose a thousand bucks in 20 minutes in blackjack. But you're they also have a lose sports book. Thousand dollars in blackjack. It's in craps that you're going to lose a thousand dollars. Well, in 20 you got to be smart with it. My buddies, <laughs> my buddies will bet way too much money. They'll have like four hundred dollars out on it. And they have just won probably a fourteen hundred dollars and one one roll, or one one continuous roll. But as soon as they lose, they're upset. It's like, man, maybe take some money off the table then if you're going to lose and lose six hundred dollars on one roll. So I I don't play like that. I'm not that kind of crap guy. Also, go to the table with a game plan in terms not only of what you're going to do strategically with the game, but also how much you're willing to lose, how right. long you'll stay, how yeah, much. I'm, I'm you don't walk that. in willy nilly to a gambling weekend, guys. We got to know what we're willing to lose here. We'll have. Why don't we have a special seminal headlines like middle of August <laughs> to get people prepped for how yeah. they need to handle Harris. Yeah. And, and don't important. tell me if you want any money because I will ask if you've reported it, if you've told the IRS <laughs> no, about it. Of on, a, on a live radio program, <laughs> to a dear friend in front of everybody. My fault. My fault. That's did, my bad. Did you report it? Did you file it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio. It's not the Jeff Cameron Show. I'm being persecuted. Yeah, uh, right. but, it's, it, but it's seminal headlines that I'm being persecuted on. 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. That guy said Corey's dry snitch. 2021 Dodge Charger. A Tallahassee man told the sheriff's office on Sunday his charger was stolen from the parking lot of Mr. Pips in Bainbridge. The car is cobalt blue and has red Dodge emblems on it. It has a Florida license plate K37BL. Deputies are asking for any information from the public that could help them solve the case. You can contact DCSO investigators at 229-400-8020 or 229-400-8004. Summer may have just begun, but you may have to wait a bit longer to go take a dip in the pool due to lifeguard shortages. Some community pools have had to delay opening for the summer, while others must close down altogether. To combat the shortage, Trousta Aquatic Center is offering free of charge certifications and lifeguard training. For more information, contact them at 850-891-4903. This is Rachel Linnae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Chance for scattered thunderstorms this afternoon, otherwise mainly sunny skies. High of 92, westerly winds around 5 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies and quiet tonight. Chance for scattered thunderstorms, lows level off around 72. Slight chance for scattered storms again tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 94, mainly sunny skies and calm. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 87. Men, it's time. The Men's March to End Abortion and Rally for Personhood is Saturday, June 11th, the weekend before Father's Day, from 12 to 3 p.m. in Tallahassee, Florida. Men gather at 12 p.m. for the march. All women, children, and families join us for the 2 p.m. rally at the Florida State Capitol. You are needed. Every life matters. Join us on June 11th in Tallahassee. For more information, go to themensmarch.com. 
Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. There's a TikTok that's going viral because of a butter softening method. They are putting the Vermont Creamery butter in the waistband of her pants. Give it five minutes. You can go and measure out your ingredients, and then your butter is ready to go. You oh. cannot do this in Florida. No. Because your pants will be full of butter yeah. in two minutes. Somebody try it. Post on TikTok. Tag. Unless it says juicy across the back. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Seminole Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. You know, I must say, I must be an incredibly uh, generous endorser, but uh, Corey, you and I are both going to be doing this, so I just wanted to point out, well, Athletic Green's here, guys. Well, Athletic oh, nice. Green's here as we start. The, just I a little early endorsement. Uh, I haven't I haven't done mine yet, but I'm uh, Stephanie did and loved it. I got to uh, gotta start mine tomorrow. I'll start mine tomorrow. It's good I've for been, gut health, Ira. It's good for yeah. your gut. Yeah. Sweet. And, uh, and, and it assures that you get proper uh, nutrition. So there you go. There you go. I've been doing it for a year and I've been paying out the ass to do it by the way, guys. And so now it's great. Well, to that's not a great endorsement. A little it's reasonably price. priced. <laughs> it's reasonably priced. <laughs> but, I mean, goodness. By the way, that tells you how much I've enjoyed it, that I've mm, continued yeah. to spend. It's just, just that's how effective out your ass. it is, just, yeah. just so you know. Yeah. I saw Leonard Hamilton yesterday. So did you, Corey. I got a chance to talk to him. So I didn't see him. Up. I did see Ray Allen, though. I got to see, Ray, see Allen Ray Allen walking out. That we was both cool. walked right next to Ray yeah. Allen. Yeah. He's apparently got a bunch of kids at this camp, uh, four. Ira. Yeah. He's got four. Four kids at this camp. Uh, but I wanted to point out that um, that uh, Ham was in a good mood. I wish him well publicly here because he had just had hip surgery. Uh, re relatively recently. And I go, man, you go from the Achilles to the hip. And he talked about it's a, it's hell to get old, uh, mm. but that he's, but he's doing better. Uh, and the other reason that I bring up my conversation with coach Hamilton is that he was obviously giddy about the latest addition to the basketball team. And so we should celebrate for a moment and at least make mention of Baba. It's exciting. He's supposed to be really good, man. He's supposed to be like a draftable kid, like an international prospect and, and Gonzaga wanted him. So yeah, he's not supposed to be. he is. I mean, he's he's big time. I mean, this is a this is a big get. People aren't as familiar with him as if maybe he was a guy in the states. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a huge get for Florida State basketball. Um, and I mean, it, when you look at what they've done through the between the portal and then adding this to the recruiting class and what they've got coming back, I and mean, I think there's a lot of reason to be excited about this season. I know Jeff, you were starting to wane. Thinking oh, that the, still, the window, I, the window is closing, but I do this, think it's closing. But I am excited about this pickup. But I can, it can be both. The combination of him, the the guard from US UCF, the kid they got from Brown, the shot blocker defender, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and then the guys they've got coming back and Cameron, yeah, Fletcher, Matthew Cleveland Nahim, coming back, Nahim, a, Nahim yeah. McLeod, and I mean that's it's. I think this team's going to be, you know, last year's team got derailed obviously because of the injuries, but this team I think. I think it's going to be better than that team easily. And I think yeah. if they can stay healthy, I think they can get back into that competition in the upper echelon. And you forget about the UCF kid. Uh, Green right. is his last name, right? Um, yeah. That, that um, you know, I think he was their second leading scorer this year. He averaged 13 or something a game. He hit six Big threes. Shooter. Yeah. yeah, he hit six threes against Florida State when they beat him in, in the Civic Center. He's also Brady's counselor at the camp this week. Nice. So that's cool. Um, and to be honest with you, and I, this isn't, doesn't say much about me, I'd forgotten about him until Brady told me who his camp counselor was. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's an important piece. I mean, he's huge. You, you think about who you're losing and then who, and you know, we won't mention people by name other than John Butler, which is, you know, this kid immediately makes you better at that spot, in my opinion, um, because he's not going to just get pushed around and he can score at the rim. Um, but also, um, you know, other guys that maybe didn't shoot as well as you would have liked last year. Now you've got a kid that's proven he can he can hit seven, eight threes in a game if he gets hot. And Florida State hadn't had one of those 
well, I was going to say it'll probably since MJ, MJ would have some games like that, but that's a re- they didn't shoot well at all last year at all. Um, so that, that's a really, that's a really important piece to go along with this kid who apparently is a bit of a freak who was six, two until he was 14 or 15 and then grew nine inches. So he still handles the ball like a guard. Yeah. Leonard was really excited specifically yesterday when I asked him about it, he said, he's a guy. Uh, that What does he sign? Does he sign? No, he said excited. He said Leonard's excited. Yeah. Okay. But I don't think he's allowed to talk about. Oh, no, oh. he signed. He signed. He's... It's official. Yeah, it's official. He's in. It was announced by the school. Yes. Okay. Sure, I didn't sure see was. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's in. I won't tell you when it was announced, Ira, but it has been announced by the school here in the last 24 hours. Yep. That he has signed. So, so the, the point okay. would be he was excited about him and he was, he was saying about his potential that he's a guy that um, he feels like can come in and help them immediately. And you know, Leonard is loath to say that he doesn't, he doesn't put unrealistic expectations on people. He is, uh, you know, every time I try to get him on the record about a kid that they're going to get, or that they are sure they have, he, if I say, what do you think he can be for us this year? He's always like, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You know, he doesn't. And I always respect that he does that. And I'm not saying he overstated what he thought this kid would be, but that I mean, he thought he could help right away. That says a lot because, again, Leonard doesn't put those kind of expectations on people too often. And do you think uh, – I brought this up on Wake Up War Chant. Do you think this is where uh, Florida State, for the immediate future, where they, they shift their recruiting focus maybe? Because I don't, I don't think they're going to get a lot of uh, – um, in the era of NIL, they're not going to be pulling a lot of Scotty Barneses and Patrick Williamses and, and of, the, of that ilk. So is this where you go overseas where they can't have NIL deals because of work visas and things like that? Yeah. Or uh, is that, do you think that's what Leonard does for the, the remainder of his career? Because clearly until this happened, this had been the most pedestrian recruiting class Florida state had had in a good long while, ever since this, this, this second run started. So maybe you say this that, is what he does. There were, there were a couple of four stars in there. It wasn't like a bad class. It just, they didn't have that big five-star guy. And they right. missed they out on a lot of all those starts. guys. They kept but, losing out on like the Derek yeah, Whitehead kid and, and other guys they were in the running for. They lost out, lost out on. And you wonder why. And I mean, you know, NIL, I mean, it's not like Derek Whitehead went to UTEP. He went to Duke, I think. So he, he, he's, he went to a pretty good place, but you got to imagine you're not competing with Duke when it comes to those kind of resources, I would think. And I, that, this just seems like maybe the one big kid they get each year, or they have a chance each year with, with maybe one or two international guys that maybe they weren't recruiting here recently. I think it's going to be a combination between that, then also the portal. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And then, you know, and, and man, he's got so many relationships. He can still yeah. pull one big guy. But I think it's going to be a mixture of that. Um, and they've always done well internationally. And I don't think this is one where um, this is a kid and his people just found out about Leonard Hamilton or just found out about Florida State. Florida State has had a lot of successful players his type. They've recruited internationally forever. Leonard Hamilton has connections that go back. 50 plus years in but don't all you think, basketball Ira, this circles. is this is the most ready-made international player he's brought in like this isn't a project this isn't Bojanovsky or Ojo or Gilcrest or Kumaji or one of these guys this is this dude should start for them and they don't typically yeah. bring in the the ready-made guys they're more like the project guys this guy was a was a you know again Gonzaga was after him he's considered to be one of the very top if not the top international prospect yeah, that says it all. I mean, and we are now in an era where international prospects translate. <laughs> they, they come in and they play well. It used to be you're kind of like, eh, I don't know what I'm going to get. Most of the time, if you're a highly touted international prospect these days, whether that's going into the NBA or college basketball, it turns out that it translates. It's a good thing. So it's a well, huge so, And so much of the game has translated. So much of the United States game, the American game, has kind of started patterning a little bit more off the European game in the sense of, yeah. Yeah, the bigs playing outside, yeah. the perimeter game, and all that. So you have guys that are, you know, it's 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 a much smoother transition. And again, I think what Florida State's been doing offensively uh, certainly fits in well. And I think that's a big reason they were able to game. I, I know everybody talks about Gonzaga lot, brings back those guys, and that that hurt them, no doubt. But there's a lot of other schools that would have been interested too. Yeah. Florida State was a school he was very interested in because of what they've done the last few years. Yeah, in fact, his quote is one that should warm the heart. I mean, we we have really kind of fallen back on how much culture has played a part in Coach Hamilton's ability to get uh, elite players to a place that 
really would have never been considered in the past. And he's created that culture. And that's why last year was so disappointing. In addition to the injuries, it seems they lost some of it. And I was really worried that, oh, man, could this be the beginning of the end of this incredible culture that they've been able to foster to where people come in and they adapt immediately to being unselfish. They come off the bench. They do those things. And they uh, acquiesce to the style of play where so many guys get so much time. And his quotes yesterday was basically what he said, Bob Miller said, the style of play matches mine with the abilities and the freedom they give their players uh, to play at any position. I love the culture at Florida State. As soon as I got there, I could see the brotherhood they have. They have tight relationships, players and coaches. I love the vibes that were there from this team right from the beginning. Well, that excited me to read that quote. I was like, okay, good. Okay, because that's something specifically that I've told people that has allowed Florida State to kind of get over on some of the bigger programs. That's one of the ways that they could get over was that they had created this uh, family atmosphere that people bought into and were proving to be unselfish and willing to, uh, again, give in to maybe playing less minutes than they would elsewhere. Well, and also you got to think about it. It ain't like he's coming over here to get a ton of shots. I mean, he's not going to get 18 shots a game. Caleb Mills is still here. Matthew Cleveland is still here. Fletcher's a very good player. And the green kid from UCF is the best shooter on the team. So there's not a lot of shots to go around. Um, And that's the one thing I do wonder about when we talk about this team, and not that we're going to break down the basketball team here in June, but who is the culture keeper? Who is the guy that like may, is like, man, it doesn't matter that you get seven shots a game. I know Leonard can do it and, the, and Stan can do it, but the, who are the players, that the Malik Osbournes, the Trent Forrest, the Anthony Polites that have, that have – all these guys, Caleb, Fletcher, Cleveland, the, all they've experienced is getting routed in the ACC tournament and why Wilkes getting elbowed in the chest and crumpling. Like that's, that's their season last year with all those injuries and not a lot of great moments. So how do they how do they build that how do they build that culture that we were used to seeing the four years before that and don't let last season define who they are and I guess that's what Leonard gets paid a lot of money for is well, that's I mean, I his think, job too and I think there's a bunch of ways number one is all those guys come back in the summer Trent Forrest Devin Vassell yeah. Patrick Williams all those guys come back so they're around them they've, they've watched this team play they've seen how these guys have been successful they see how Scotty Barnes and, and Patrick went number four in the draft by not even starting. So those right. things are all important. And then I think the other thing is, you know, last year uh, we made a lot of big, we made a lot of, uh, we talked a lot about last season about that team, the way they kind of gave up in some games, but man, I'm telling you, I really think a lot of that wasn't the culture crumbling. It was, you just didn't have anybody left. You never anybody that could play. Everybody yeah. was hurt. It, you know, I don't think the culture has gone just because of that one bad season. It's good news, certainly, for the moment in June that they get a big name, and we'll find out about this team moving forward. Next up, headliner questions, obviously, on some of the headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Now go, go, call Seminole Glass. Now get on the road and get it done. Your local family-owned glass company, serving the Big Bend for over 15 years. At Seminole Auto Glass, we care about your safety. Insurance will send you wherever it benefits them, not the quality of service. There's a difference in auto glass companies. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass. They the lady kind of broken glass, and you know who they are. Better call Seminole. <laughs> Another check from Northern Florida? Yes, Your Majesty. And may I ask why we get it? It's from one of our businesses in the States, a pest control company. Oh, and what do we know about pests in Northern Florida? Absolutely nothing. Did you know that most pest and termite companies that serve Tallahassee are actually owned and operated by people that don't even live in our area? One owner is actually in Great Britain. Paul's Termite and Pest Control was founded in North Florida operates in North Florida, and services North Florida. All of Paul's decisions and treatments, plus prevention methods, are centered around the unique needs of our wonderful part of the world. Being local really does matter in our industry. Don't trust the health of your family to companies that aren't even on our continent. Protect your biggest investment from termites and your family and pets from pests with a company with the local advantage, Paul's Termite and Pest Control. And remember, Paul's keeps North Florida lawns green, too. For the elimination of termites and other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Pauls. We'll get them all. Will you use a fly swatter? I believe we do. When I get home from work, I'm ready to relax. So I call Swain Pools and Spas to put my pool in the back. I call Swain Pools and Spas. Now I'm soaking up the fun when I want to. 
Truckloads of new and used Caldera and Hot Spring Spas are available now at Swain Pools and Spas. Don't wait. Get to Swain Pools and browse the best inventory to find the spa of your dreams. These won't last long, so come see us today. Just look for the huge sign on Tharp Street or call 386-7113 for Swain Pools and Spas. I know what you're thinking right now. Where can I find a place to get my car fixed and also check out some awesome new hot tubs and spas while I wait? Well, you're in luck. Because when you bring your car or truck in to get serviced at Tallahassee Car Care, it's under the same roof as Swain Pools and Spas for tires, brakes, batteries, tune-ups, oil changes, and all the service you need to get back on the road. Choose the certified technicians at Tallahassee Car Care. Drop by our shop on Bark Street or visit online at TallahasseeCarCare.com. Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. GOP gun negotiator Senator John Cornyn of Texas. Says lawmakers need more time to craft a bipartisan gun bill in the wake of the Uvalde, Texas school shooting. Bob Agnew reports. In urging Majority Leader Schumer to extend the time frame for a deal, Cornyn said on the Senate floor Monday, quote, there is no use in rushing a vote on a doomed bipartisan bill like the House is expected to vote on this week. Compromise appears likely in the Senate. Longtime Democrat proposals such as banning AR-15 rifles and universal background checks are off the table. Instead, lawmakers are considering urging states to create more red flag laws, promote firearm safe storage, and address mental health. Bob Agnew reporting. Also at townhall.com, San Francisco voters Fed up with brazen burglaries and auto smash and grabs could oust one of the most progressive prosecutors in the country in a rare recall election. Jessup Budin won narrowly in 2019 as part of a national wave of liberal district attorneys, but his time in office coincided with a pandemic in which attacks against Asian Americans and rapid shoplifting rattled residents. Americans worried about the stock market. The latest Rasmussen Report's National Telephone and Online Survey finds that 55% of American adults believe it is likely the United States will enter a 1930s-like depression over the next few years, including 25% who think another Great Depression is very likely. That's the highest finding in regular surveying since 2009. 34% now don't think another depression is likely, while 11% are not sure. A survey of 1,000 U.S. adults was conducted between May 11th and 12th, the margin of error was plus or minus 3% with a 95% level of confidence. Bernie Bennett reporting. On Wall Street, the Dow had 83 points and the NASDAQ up 38. More on these stories at townhall.com. I'm about to compare a pepper shaker to a cash out refinance. Hang with me. You know when you're at a restaurant and they ask, would you like some fresh ground pepper? And then they crank that giant tube, but almost nothing comes out? For me, only a certain amount of time is socially acceptable to wait. I know that getting that pepper out might make my life better, but it just seems too impossible. And that's what we hear people say about the cash out refinance. People realize that the value of their home has gone up like hot pepper the last few years, leaving all this extra money sitting inside their home. But is it too hard to get out? It's Ryan from United Faith Mortgage. If you're interested in cashing out the extra pepper in your home, we're good at doing all the work while you just sit back and relax. And often... Your mortgage payment and years in the loan will stay the same. If you'd like to hear about your options, we are United, United Faith Mortgage. mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Metal Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to Animalist Consumer Access. Tell our corporate animalist number 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Hi, my name is Shannon Pash, and I'm the principal at Red Hills Academy. We will provide a challenging, rigorous curriculum. We will also work with our students to teach them how to set goals and then how to work to reach those goals. Red Hills Academy will offer the Spanish language every day. Relationships are really important to us, not just with our students, but with our families and the community. This benefits parents and students alike because parents get that involvement within the school. Easily apply online today at redhillsacademy.com. 
Many orthodontists in Tallahassee can straighten a smile, but at Birch Orthodontics, they're dedicated to providing the finest care possible. The experienced and friendly staff is trained in all of the latest techniques. So whether you need standard treatment like braces or Invisalign, or you have a more complicated case requiring extra attention, Birch Orthodontics is here for you. Set up your free consultation today by visiting birchorthodontics.com, B-U-R-C-H orthodontics.com, or call 850-877-1692. At Birch Orthodontics, they create beautiful smiles that last a lifetime. It's time for Seminal Headlines, featuring Warchant.com's Jeff Cameron, Managing Editor Ira Chauffel, and Senior Writer Corey Clark. Your weekly dose of all things FSU, Pistols and Pies, starts right now. Here's Jeff Cameron. Hour number two, headliner questions on Seminal Headlines, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Great to be with you as always. We'll get to your questions momentarily. Just a reminder, this hour brought to you by our friends at Birch Orthodontics. Birch Orthodontics, the best in the business, both my boys and all of Ira's girls. And if Corey cared at all, his son would be there too. It's all a celebration of Birch Orthodontics this hour, of course. And uh, if you have orthodontic needs or your kids do, uh, in all seriousness, go check out Birch Orthodontics. It's a no-pressure group. You'll love them. They're professional, but they give you a lot of different options and uh, free consultation to boot. So there you go. I you guys think I could, you think I could drop in with Brady, like unannounced? I think, I, think if you, I think if you showed up at Birch Orthodontics and said, hey, I'm Corey Clark from Seminole Headlines, Yep. I think they would. Dr. Birch would be into the lobby within about five minutes. She You'd would have keep, a She would have. She would leave tools in a kid's mouth to run out to the lobby to, Dude, to talk to me. When so when my kids were going there, I would literally would be talking to Dr. Birch sometimes, and my kids would be in there waiting for her. She wouldn't like make other kids wait. She'd make right. my kids wait. Sure, because right. you know she wanted to chat, talk a little FSU football. But then you know she gets right back at it. But but I think she would come out to see you, and then I think Brady would be so impressed. And be mm. so excited about what Dr. Birch can do. She would buy can I Can I get braces? And, that, and would if Brady, would, Brady would move to Tallahassee full time. You, you'd have to stop. You, you wouldn't have to keep driving up there. Shanna, Shanna and Ryan, they'd have to move down here. Or Shanna's the one that does the commute. Yeah. They'd all, exactly. Because, because I mean, Brady wouldn't be able to walk out of there without signing. <laughs> without a signing an agreement to stay in the city. She's the best all recruiter right. in the business. There's no right. doubt. Right. Yeah. Well, the good. Onward we go to the <laughs> headliner questions of the day. <laughs> Uh, BirchOrthodontics.com is the website. Stevens writes, this This is good. And it's also your... spelled B-U-R-C-H. It's all right there on the screen, too. But if you're listening, you can spell Birch a number, a number of different. Well, probably just two. But it's B-U-R-C-H. Just throwing Thanks. that out there. You right. got it, guys. You got it. Stevens writes, what was your favorite error of the weekend? Feel free to include your favorite base running mistake as well. Uh, guys, I have to tell you, when you're being routed uh, 11 to 1, uh, I especially like it when you get a routine single and it goes under your glove and rolls to the fence and guys just run the bases. That's well, fun. think about but, that but, because he's, he's got to play at the plate. So he could have he could have kept it to 12 to 1 and if he ha- makes that throw. <laughs> and whatever happened, why did they end up guys second and third? Like how did that not clear the bases? I don't know. Scored, I guess the kid got held up or didn't see it or something. Two runs. Yeah. I was like, it was like, like in Little League, we're like, okay, let's stop taking bases. My favorite one, I look, man, I just love Tyler Martin's header. Um, you know, when he got caught in, in one of his Shot rundowns, yeah. and he, dude, he might have a future in soccer. I mean, it was, uh, that was impressive. Or as a seal at uh, Seaboro. Yeah. <laughs> one the other. That was impressive. When that you was say, crazy to get in a rundown and then jump. I mean, you got to be a little more subtle, man. You can't jump up and do a. Su- he did a move that's never been done on a baseball field before. <laughs> that's awesome. I um. I also liked it was Terrell after a walk getting picked off between second and third. Yeah. Now, now, so I get. I mean, I'm not sure why. I'm. I, you assume that he's thinking there's you know the bunt's going to get down, but why are we bunting with was it three and zero? It was just a, the, there was a lot of there's a lot of questions after that. Uh, after that, a, pain, uh, a lot of painful moments, guys. A lot of painful moments. Um, Kyle writes, "Hey guys, thanks for all the great content you put out. The Spanx lady just died. My condolences, and she left you each five hundred million dollars. Congratulations! Wow. What are the top three things each of you build by for FSU athletics? Well, I, I think I can speak for the three of us when I say 
we're not spending a penny right now on FSU athletics. We're going to sit back and wait till this sea change occurs and we figure out exactly what's what. Because I'm not just throwing away five hundred million dollars, guys, on statues. Well, look, man, you could throw away you could throw away twenty million. You still got four eighty in the bank. I, I, hey, listen. Hey. You don't know. You don't know that twenty million. That could be a, a beautiful, beautiful condo in Paris. I'm going to hold off. Hey, and don't try to shelter any. Don't try to shelter any of that money because Corey will come after you. Oh, I yeah, will. He'll, he'll better not. me out here, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say I would finally get Jimbo to dance on my lawn. I don't know what that would take, but I think $12 million for 30 minutes would get him here. I don't know. You don't think he'd do it for – you don't think Jimbo think would price, dance on my lawn is, for $12 million? I think the price has gone up. I was gonna say I'm not talking up. about it every day for a year. He's doing it for 30 minutes for $12 million. I don't think there's – there might be nine people in the country that wouldn't do it. For, for 30 minutes, but um, I don't know what I would build. I, I guess I would build. Um, no, what would I do? Honestly, what would it take to move the baseball stadium to college town in front of college town, the intramural fields? That's probably well, a $40 million endeavor, 30 or 40 million, 50 million. That would, that would definitely get it going. I don't know if that would cover it, but listen, man, I, I'll say this. If you don't build Mickey Andrews, a statue or something, I'm calling you out because well, you've been bitching about that. 15 years. I'm going to build a and statue you're going to get $500 behind, million dollars and you're not going to do something for Mickey Andrews. That's I'm going to build a, I'm going to, I'm going to rename it uh Mickey Andrews way. I'm going to rename the stadium after him. I'm also going to have a statue right behind the Al Dunlap statue with Mickey with a chainsaw going at his knees, going at Dunlap's knees. And what's Florida state going to do? Oh, we don't want your money. I get to tell them what I want my statue to be and they're going to do it. So I got a lot of ideas, actually. I got a I'm lot of ideas. I'm going to put a McDonald's sign on the back of the scoreboard. <laughs> Smart. I think it's a good look for when you go down games. Or why don't we just put our Seminole Headlines uh, logo on there? That, the three that actually – well, that should be on the 50-yard line maybe. Um, for enough yeah, money, it would be. Jeff, you wouldn't You wouldn't cut them – You wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. The celebration of me pouring the champagne. <laughs> Jeff, you wouldn't cut them off 5 or 10 mil just off the top just to kind of get the annihil – Get, get it going, get some players in here. Yeah, you yeah, would. I think, I think that in order to keep from being bored, once I figured out what I was giving my friends and family and I'd stored away to ensure a luxurious retirement for myself uh, and my wife, I think I would get involved in NIL as in I would lead the charge. I'd be the guy. There would be – like I'm not reaching out to Matthew Quigley – Shout out Matthew Quigley. I'm taking over from this point forward. This is how this is working, the, guys. The is, you call me not, when you need to know who we're giving what to, okay? The spear's not rising anymore. It has risen. It is it, me. It is me. Right. You guys are operating beneath me, and I'm telling you where this money's going. So we've got great it's... ideas, Ira. You haven't said anything. What are you doing? Just putting it in the Caymans? Uh, are you coming after my money, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look at him. Yeah. He's already yeah. thinking about how he's going to get your money. I'm tired of you guys uh, not paying your uh, paying your share. I would, uh, you know what, man? I, I think the baseball stadium is a nice idea. Also, uh, a new basketball facility, basketball practice facility. The facility Leonard Hamilton has always wanted, even though he won't be here to enjoy it. Uh, maybe the Leonard Hamilton practice facility and build it the way he really wanted it, not the way it was built before he got the job here. That would be a big one. Okay, fair. We did it. Uh, Michael writes, I know we all thought Meat was going to clean up a lot of the sloppiness that plagued the late 11 teams. But could it be that they played sloppy because he was the de facto coach during that time too? Does make sense. The issues haven't been fixed since the time that eleven has left. Yeah, no. If anything, I think some of the issues have gotten oddly worse. Somebody jokingly texted uh, me and Ira that maybe uh, Meat was holding eleven back there at the end of those years. Supposed to the other way. <laughs> uh, look, I mean, I think uh, you know you can look at it two ways. On the one hand, like with, with basketball, when Early in Leonard Hamilton's tenure, when the team was not very good, they were bad at the free throw line, they were bad at end game situations. Well, once they got better players, those things resolved themselves. We, you know, so from one on the one hand, you could say, man, get better infielders. I mean, I don't know how you end up signing a guy who can't throw from second to first base. So that that seems to be one part of the solution. But then again, I think the other part of it is what we touched on earlier. It's not just about taking ground balls. It's about understanding the game and being – committed and not losing focus and whatever that attention to detail is, there's something there about that, that this team is not, it's just, there's more to it to me than just fundamentals. But I do think getting better players is a start. You need to get kids who can play the position. And, you know, they at least have one kid who couldn't play the position. 
And then maximize or, their potential, right? When they're here. Right. Like, I, I, I don't understand how Brock Mathis never caught. He caught like nine games this year or, or just didn't play. I mean, the kid Corey, averaged a home run every Corey, 11 at you, bats. Do you not see the fielding prowess, the power from Colton Vincent that you expected to see I mean, as, so the, as the replacement? So, so that's again, that's my point. I know they had a kid that they wanted a catcher, and I get it. I understand that you know the circumstances change, but you have a you know you have an infielder who can't play the position. Really, a couple spots you don't have infielders that really can't play the position. You have a first baseman who's not athletic enough that to, to the level you need. You've got a catcher who can't hit at all. I mean, those are fundamental problems. We can talk about all these other intangibles. There, there were fundamental problems with this yeah. team. And, you know, again, he's been the head coach for three years. Well, and, I, and the, the going back to Vincent, he had they had twenty nine pass balls as a team. By the way, Notre Dame has twelve. So again, that's seventeen extra errors just a catcher. And Colton Vincent had twenty one of those pass balls to go along with you know a one ninety five batting average and a two thirty five slugging. Meanwhile, you had a kid on your bench who clearly wasn't a very good catcher if he couldn't beat out Colt, couldn't beat out Colton Vincent. I get that, but he hit six home runs. He had the highest slugging percentage on your team. He had six home runs and sixty seven at bats. He was hitting a home run every 11 at-bats. But in that final game, who's your DH? Tyler Martin, who has, doesn't have a home run in his career and can't run. I mean, he's, he gets on base at a good clip because he'll walk, but he doesn't do anything for you once he's on base because he can't run real well. And you've got Brock Mathis, who's your only legitimate power threat outside of Terrell, and well, uh, he can't play. That, that's, well, that's it's, it's the managing in-game and in-season, not just the players, too, that was all so confounding. Yeah, I was just about to say, for a team that lacks power, you're sitting a guy with all of the power. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's that's rather frustrating. Uh, Burke Buchanan writes, in the opinion of the headliner crew, is A.D. Alford capable of bringing FSU's big three, football, basketball, baseball, back to national relevance? Listen, I, that that's not all on the athletic director. Obviously, we're, we're talking about the ever-changing climate of college athletics and and where the money situation stands for Florida state. But um, he's about to have his first big test and he's about to have several of them. Uh, if you think about it, because first of all, now, obviously they just extended Lonnie. So that's a good thing. And obviously they're excited to get that done from there. You look forward. He's going to have to make a decision on Mike Martin jr. Sooner rather than later. I doubt it's done this year, but if they're not any good next year, He's got a decision to make on his hands. Yeah. I think just by definition, Leonard Hamilton is going to be 74 years old before the start of the next season. So he's going to have a decision to make at basketball in the near future. Okay. That's just a given. And Ham's not going to coach forever. Uh, and obviously we're in the midst of all wringing our hands about what to do with this football program. And if this is a season in which they don't win eight games and they're six and six or they're middling or whatever that might be, then, He's going to have a hard decision to make moving forward with football as well. So we're about to find out. I don't know if he's capable or not. I don't think any of us could possibly know that. We just know that he now has the autonomy that previous athletic directors post Dave Hart never had. Yeah, he certainly does, especially he's got a president who's not heavily involved in athletics. He's got he's in charge of Seminole Boosters. He's in charge of the athletics department. And, you know, the board of trustees will have ultimate oversight. And there are some people uh, on the board that have a lot of interest in athletics. So he'll get input. But, yeah, it's going to be on him. And, uh, you know, I, that's why they're putting all these resources into football. They've spent a ton of money on support staff to try to improve what, what Mike, Mike Norvell has to work with because they need him to succeed. Now, if he doesn't succeed, then, yeah, man, he's going to have a uh, – he's got to figure out what, he, what he's going to do because – uh, this is a huge year for the football program, but ultimately for the athletic department. Agreed. I'm just excited that we have a, a big boy athletic director, and I don't, I'm don't. i not even talking about his qualifications. Just that Florida State is now in a position like so many other schools uh, were in while we were still sort of on the back end of that previous arrangement with boosters that rendered the athletic director impotent. Now you have an athletic director who's tasked with the responsibility of these things of which we speak, and we'll find out if he's good or not. He'll get fired if he's not, but now we know it's on him. You know, the buck Agreed. stops there. It's good. You, it's important. You, you get into Twitter questions too, or are we just doing Facebook? I'm just trying I've to. I've done four straight Twitter questions, Ira. That's that's what I like to hear. I never want to hear you second guess me suck again. It. Suck it, Corey. <laughs> Man, uh, that hurt. That hurt. That stings. I'm just I'm just letting you know. I I I can I can hear the derision in the voice. Come on now, I'm balanced around here. It's these weird days. that you re, you keep rewarding the squeaky wheel. Like um, I don't get. I've never once asked you, hey, are we doing some Facebook questions now? But no, Ira does it every never, show. Never once. 
Never well, once. Let me, let me, let me I know the that. one year, the one week I didn't have to worry about it because you didn't even ask for Twitter questions. <laughs> Yeah, the one thing I would say is both of you could can stand down because at various points you've bitched and complained about the way that I guide this. Well, ship. that's a good point. You're right and, about that. And, and so I think I think we just have learned our and lesson. You're wasting here. all this time. You could have asked another question. Let's go. I could have, but I was busy assuring Ira <laughs> that Twitter was well represented. Right. Uh, Butch writes, "Hello, boys. I'll be brief. How does the baseball team shape up for next year?" You think we lose Messick and Hubbard to the league given their less than stellar performances at the end of the season? Keep up the great work. Yeah, Messick is gone. And uh, as far as Hubbard goes, um, he might be the most disappointing element of the baseball team this year. I thought uh, probably what his last four to five starts, you pretty much had could guarantee that he wasn't going to give you anything of any value. Correct. Yeah, I would agree with that. Cause at the beginning of the year, it was like, which one of these guys is actually better? Like mm -hmm. Hubbard was putting up huge strikeout numbers and Hubbard was throwing seven innings of one run ball. Yeah. And then once he got into the heart of ACC competition and then late in the year, oh, well, let's see if he can get you through three. Let's see if he can get you to the fourth inning. That's, that's what that's what the bar became for him. But he's still a talent. So you assume, you know, yeah. he'll, he'll, he, he will, he'll have an opportunity to make a decision. Uh, we'll have to see. But I think that what everybody's more focused on, I think, is is the younger guys because – you know, particularly Ferrer and Tibbs, and I mean, there's there's some young talent on this team. Tibbs is my guy, right there. Yeah. Well, you, you love this. You love the left-handed swing. You just, well, it's uh, just a gorgeous swing. He's got power to all fields. He can drive the. I mean, listen, don't yeah. screw him up, or else I'm off of you for life. Because yeah. he's that's about as good as you can get right there. And so Ferrer was probably their best overall player offensively. Uh, probably like was their best overall player. They got two good guys. Roberts, I guess, could come back. Um, but yeah, man, there, there's a lot of holes. There's a lot of issues, including. Uh, uh, who's going to be your start? Who's going to be your starting pitchers? Carson Montgomery, Crowell. Like who? Who? Who's going to be Ross Dunn after that debacle in Auburn? Like who? Who? Who do you bring back to pitch on this team? By the way, that's another problem. Ross Dunn's got really good stuff. There's no reason to watch this guy fall to pieces and yeah. look like he's never pitched a day in his life by season's end. I mean, we all saw that kid pitch. We've all seen the stuff. It's 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 as good as almost anybody on this team has so well and that's gonna be the challenge because when you talked about recruiting and like what are you selling as a vision of the, the program you know if you go back to like O'Sullivan when O'Sullivan came into Florida and really kind of took over the state it was because of what he had done with arms in his previous stops he was known as a guy who could get more velocity he could turn guys into first round picks as pitchers and then he proved it like he proved it at Florida they had success they they you know win national title I mean, it's it's rolling now. It seems to be kind of coming back down, but but that's how he did it. When Meat kind of really took over recruiting and then coming into being head coach, he was selling a lot of that, and I, they did well on recruiting. I think they recruited better these last few years than they have been earlier. But the problem now is you don't have anything to back it up with. And some when you have players, again, Carson Montgomery Montgomery's a great example. He's got as good a stuff as anybody in the country and cannot be effective as a pitcher. That hurts you on the recruiting trail. Well, I've got a bunch of really good questions on both Twitter and Facebook mm, that we've nice. got to get to. We will do so momentarily. Some of the headlines continues in a moment. 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. What do you think of first? The food, of course. The food. But you got to think about the food prep. And Hearth and Patio has thought about that with their awesome grills. What kind of grills? Fire Magic, Broil Master, Blaze Grills, Kamado Joe, Matt, they got it all. Wow. Custom outdoor kitchens create an outdoor cooking space. You'll be the envy of your neighborhood. You will be the envy of your neighborhood, and you'll make a lot of people jealous. That's because you called Hearth and Patio at 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. Or you can visit Hearth and Patio online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. <laughs> it's a backyard barbecue party. <laughs> That's Lee Holcomb's number one more time. 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. The Hearth and Patio, they not only keep the home fires burning, Hearth and Patio will elevate your grilling day. Nice. Nice indeed. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. 
Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Let's be honest. We all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Hey, this is Dustin Rivest. During the pandemic, I noticed restaurants struggling with online ordering and watched as all the major third parties took advantage of our local restaurants and thought there must be a better way, which is why I created foodiestakeout.com. The unique thing about Foodies Takeout is that restaurants keep 100% of their order revenue versus splitting upwards of 30% with the third parties like Uber Eats and Bite Squad. At Foodies Takeout, you can find some of your favorite restaurants, such as Jerry's Midtown Cafe, Misty's Kitchen in Frenchtown, Casa Grande, and even El Jalisco. Or if you're on the north side of town, check out Horizons Bar and Grill. Why not give us a try? Head to foodiestakeout.com or text foodies to 230-9456, and I'll even give you 10% off your first meal. Supporting local restaurants has never been easier. Visit foodiestakeout.com. Physical stress in our bodies can take its toll as the years go by. Whether you're looking to get back into an old sport or just want to spend more time outdoors to explore all life has to offer in our beautiful city, the dedicated team at TOC is here for you every step of the way. You can trust TOC for all your orthopedic needs. And now, scheduling an appointment has never been easier. Just visit TeamTOC.com and click Schedule Online. That's TeamTOC.com. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can, too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Seminal Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chofel, and Corey Clark. Steve Wright, gentlemen, thanks for the laugh, laughs and the insights. The last time we looked that bad on national television, FSU fired Willie Taggart. Please explain why Mike Martin Jr. should be different. I really can't tell the difference between this year and last. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a it's a fair question. It's not even this year and last. It's really not a difference between this year and 2019. And I know that team went to Omaha, but it was a very very flawed baseball team that got hot. Um, but you know, it's been two years. It's been two years, and you know he's got this year coming up to prove that at least it's upwardly mobile. Because right now it isn't. Right well, now it's think, stuck in mud. Yeah, but the the point people. The, that questioner is asking is Willie Taggart got less, less than two years. Oh, I would think the difference is that football matters and college baseball really doesn't from a financial sense. You know what I mean? Like people don't come to baseball games. You're not losing a ton of money. People stop coming to football games. You're losing your revenue. I think uh, that's a, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think the other, another thing I would say, and again, I'm not saying one way or the other, like if, 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 if Florida state made a change and they decided that this is not where they want to go because the things they've seen behind the scenes, like I couldn't like write a column saying, "Oh, what a tra tragic mistake this right. has been firing right. Mike Martin Jr." But I think one of the differences is Mike Martin Jr. was here for 20 years. He did have success in the program. Uh, there are people in the program who know him. There, there are donors who support him, who believe in him, and so that's those are all things Willie Taggart didn't have. And then there was so much going wrong behind the scenes with Willie Taggart that that it's the biggest part of the answer right there, Ira, because in that way, if they found out it was similar, you could make the change and really you wouldn't yeah, yeah. have to waver. Willie wasn't simply fired because the on the field record was abysmal. And it was, it was because it was abysmal and all of the stuff behind the scenes led nobody to believe it was going to get better. And so you had to combine those factors if, in fact, the record on the field here is poor and the way the game is played here is poor currently and you were to find out, and I don't know this, I'm not in that clubhouse, I'll reiterate that, 
But if you were to find out that there's a, a mutiny on our hands and that nobody likes playing for the guy and that we have problems in terms of communication and his coaches want out or something like that, like you had with Willie, by the way, then yeah, you could let him go and nobody would yeah. say that that was the wrong move. You would say if they like, had to. And I would say if, if like Tibbs, Ferrer, Montgomery, Bo Meister, whoever else went in the portal and transferred, the you you yeah. have a real you'd have a real you'd have a real reason to be like okay well this isn't working there's you none of these players want to play for you and you're not very good anyway so that, that I mean that's you know if something like that happened then yeah I think there's a there would be a real chance but hey I, we like Tibbs and Ferrer we we certainly hope that doesn't happen. Sean writes shout out to the animals and to Tom Lang for linking up with us in Auburn this weekend. Wish we could have seen you guys up there. If you are the AD. And given everything you know and have seen thus far from our baseball team in the last three years, I'm curious, what would each of you do? That's from Sean, who has been a loyal and uh, unwavering supporter of Seminole Headlines. I would, I would tell you that I was glad I was not there at Auburn. What occurred at Auburn was exactly what I thought would happen at Auburn. Not the 21-7, to 7, though. Eh, that no, was out of the realm. That was out of the realm of what we thought would happen. I, I thought know. they'd you lose, too, but that was crazy. You weren't stunned. You weren't stunned. I, I'm, again, I'm going to get back to something that I said on, on Monday. The fact that they looked terrible and lost uh, wasn't surprising. What would have been stunning is if they had won the regional. Right. That's yeah. how far they've fallen. And played like airless ball. Yeah. Like just that committed been, one error the whole been, weekend. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and to the point from earlier, that wouldn't have erased all the other issues. Uh, you know, just getting hot one weekend. But what would you do, uh, Ira? What would you I mean, do if you were offered? The, here's the challenge. And this is where, again, like I, I, I try not to be as reactionary. And I think we try to be not as reactionary sometimes as, as fans might be because, you know, we have a platform where, where we try to be responsible. A lot of times there are things going on behind the scenes that we don't have information about. So if I'm Michael Alford, I damn sure want to know. I want to have real conversations with Mike Martin Jr., his staff, and several of the players about what happened, what's going on, try to get a clear picture of it and whether, and find out what is the problem. And if the problem does rely on the head coach and if it is rest there, then what can be done about it? Can it be fixed? And if not, then you got to make a tough decision, but it's hard for us to say based on the product on the field, based on the, the information we have, the fact that you went, uh, you've, you two full seasons, both seasons, you made the NCAA tournament, which is not good. I mean, it's not, that's not the standard. The standard is to go further than that, but you did make the NCAA tournament. This is a guy who uh, his family and the the name is synonymous with the program. You hired him, not Michael Offer, but the school hired him. If you were to fire him two years later, just based on the results on the field, to me, that would be a bad sign. It would be a bad sign to other coaches. Just like I thought firing, firing Willie in the first two years was a, was a probably limited their ability to go get other head coaches. That's, that's a drastic measure for a school to take. And and so if you were to do that, how loyal are you going to be to anybody else? If you're going to fire Mike Martin Jr. Jr. two years. Now, if there's more going on behind the scenes that we're not privy to, then maybe you have to make that decision. But that's, I would look long and hard. I would not just rubber stamp an extension and say, figure it out next year. This is a, it's, it's a crisis. No question. So you hit on the thoroughness that is necessary. I mean, you have to vet the entirety of the situation if you're Michael Alford. This is true of any athletic director. And again, I'm going to refer to something that I said I'm happy about. He has the power to do it now. This is He's got control to where if he makes a decision, drastic or otherwise, it's his say. It's, it, he, it's his reputation and his job title that's on the line. So he owes it to uh, Mike Martin Jr., uh, the program, the fans, certainly owes it to the players and their families to have a thorough understanding of what is going on here and to go about the process of trying to fix it. I'm sure that those, for lack of a better term, exit meetings are going to be pretty interesting because I think a lot of people will have a lot to say about what's yeah. happened here the last two years. And you will have a better understanding at the very least uh, of what you're presented with in terms of making a decision right. whether to fire or move on. And, and Alfred's a that, baseball guy, right? That's Alfred's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Not only is he a baseball guy, but he was at that regional, you know, he was yeah. in the stands. That's embarrassing. When you're the athletic director mm -hmm. and your program looks like that on a big stage, that's embarrassing. You're embarrassing the school, the brand, the program, all of those things are important to Michael Alford. So yeah, man, he's going to take this very seriously. But, so, but you know, I, I, my, if I was him, I would legitimately ask because the record is one thing getting in the tournament is one. Like it is hard to win in college baseball. Now there is parody everywhere. It's hard to get to 40 wins now. Um, but why, why are the problems that were there at the end of 11's tenure, the base running and the fielding, 
still so bad. I would take a microscopic view and say, what are you doing to fix this? Because if you can't fix it, we have to figure out a way to get somebody in here that will, because this can't just be in the DNA of our program to be awful at fielding and to be, it's like the same thing with an offensive line at Florida state. It just can't be in the DNA of the program to always have a, a, an offensive line that sucks. You've got to get, you've got to become better. You've got to have a plan for this. And in baseball, again, it's not nearly on the scale. Mike Martin jr. Makes like $400,000 a year. He makes less than Lonnie. Um, so it's not like it's a, it's a financial hit. Um, that you're paying this guy huge sums of money to be your baseball coach. But I want to know why it looks like this every year. Every year, nothing seems to get better. And where you're, I know it was only your second full year, but it's year three of you running this program. Really You've quickly, three I want to get this better. Really quickly, I want to get to another question. Okay. Uh, somebody just asked us uh, on Twitter, Ira, uh, whether or not Mike Norvell is an elite coach. And what will it take for him to prove that he is? Hoisting that, uh, well, it's not a crystal ball anymore. I don't even know what the trophy looks like anymore. <laughs> you want to say this, like the, what was the, what was the original one? Um, wasn't the Sears trophy, was it? What was it, what was it called? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I it was the BCS Sears, Sears trophy. Yeah, back Sears, back yeah, when yeah. Sears was a thing. Yeah. I thought you were going to reference go far that far back. We're, we're fond of doing so on some of the headlines. We are, we are. Yeah. Uh, I look, I think Mike Norvell can be an elite coach. I honestly do as a coach, you know, to me, there's two different things. Like right. you could be a great coach at a bunch of different levels. The only question I have with Mike Norvell is, can he do it at this level, get the kind of players you need and would do whatever you've got to do, whatever it is to get that level of players that is to be determined because he's never done it. I, I know he can coach. I've watched him at practice. Yeah. I tweeted about it last summer. This guy could coach. I I've watched the way he manages players. I watched the way he works, his attention to detail. There are that. There are a lot of things. Yeah, we've all been out there. There are a lot of things to really like about Mike Norvell as a coach, especially on the grass, but also off the field as well. Can he get those elite players? That, man, that's that's going to be ultimately what determines it because he's not going to win at the level Florida State needs to win at with the type of players they've been bringing in. And this recruiting, recruiting class they've got going right now doesn't look like it's going to be it either. So now he thinks, I think, they think if they win this year, that's going to change. But, man, that has to happen. You have to get elite football players. They don't get them by and large. That's uh, yeah, I don't have to say anything else to that. I don't think Corey does either. The bottom line is we all think he can coach football. But, of course, there's a lot more to coaching football at a place like Florida State especially than just understanding the X's and O's of the game and understanding how to teach it. You got to bring in elite players to execute the play, game plan, elite players to dominate and play at a national championship level and so far, like you've said correctly, now he's had a lot of sets of circumstances right. that have prohibited him from getting those great players. But at some point, you got to get them because at some point, I don't really care all the reasons why you're not. I just care that you aren't. It's uh, some of the headlines 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV continues with more of your questions in a moment. is investigating an armed robbery that happened early Friday morning in the Brinson area. Deputies say the identity of the suspects is not known at this point, but they are believed to be white men. The victim described the suspect vehicle as a four-door early 2000s dark blue or black Ford F-150 with bullet hole rims. DCSO is offering a $500 reward for information leading to the suspect's arrest. The Tallahassee Police Department announced an arrest from a shooting incident at the 2400 block of Treetop Court Sunday. Torrance Paramore, age 29, was arrested and is accused of kicking in a door and firing a shot at a male victim. An officer heard the gunshot and entered the residence to check the safety of the occupants. Paramore was on pretrial release and was wearing an ankle monitor. The monitor tracked Paramore to the Magnolia Terrace apartments where he was arrested. This is Rachel N.A. with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Chance for scattered thunderstorms this afternoon. Otherwise, mainly sunny skies. High of 92, westerly winds around 5 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies and quiet tonight. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Lows level off around 72. Slight chance for scattered storms again tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 94. Mainly sunny skies and calm. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 90. 
Sellers Tile does it better for business owners, contractors, designers, and homeowners. Better design ideas, better quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring, better mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions. And Sellers makes it easier with their amazing showroom and first-class professionals. Maybe it's time to get Sellers working for you on Capitol Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhan Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For better style, quality, and design, go with Sellers in Tallahassee. Call 656-8453. Life is stressful. Dinner shouldn't be. That motto is why Register Sausage has been doing business in the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. A proud sponsor of Seminole Headlines, Register Sausage always provides the best southern smoked sausage to over 140 grocery stores and restaurants throughout the southeast. Headliners have discovered the Register's difference. You can too. To find a store that carries Registers near you or to buy directly, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Register Sausage. Yay, sausage! Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Pastor Tabner was alone with a female church employee. Oops. She in a towel and he in his boxers. The charismatic 41-year-old Hurley explained the two of them had been making chili and gotten food on the floor. <laughs> With the hot dogs that they're making, we are hoping that the pastor used the right condiments. I think it was at least one hot dog involved. I don't know what you're talking about. We were just making chili dogs. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. Seminole Headlines is brought to you by Register Sausage, serving the Florida Panhandle and Lower Alabama for over 75 years. To find a store near you or to buy directly from Registers, head to RegisterMeats.com. That's RegisterMeats.com. Seminole Headlines returns now. Head to YouTube and search for War Chant TV today to catch the show live or on demand. Now, here's Jeff Cameron, Ira Chauffel, and Corey Clark. Glenn writes, Mike gets a little more leash because he is competent and can put together a complete sentence uh, talking about the frustrations of uh, the last few years in football and how well Mike communicates a vision. I will say this. I think that Norvell has done a very good job of tempering expectations more than anything else. I think he has never once overstated uh, what he thought the team could be, but he does have expectations. And again, I would think that that's um, – uh, the right balance, right, of knowing that where you got to be and you know you're not yet, but without telling anybody that you're going to win 11 games. Yeah, and I would think that would be uh, one of the issues people have with me after this past year when he was on your show talking about having the best pitching staff in the country and they're going to be able to pitch it better than anyone and they're going to pick up the baseball, they're going to be all this, and it just never materialized. So, 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 you know, hearing him, and it's great that he does that each year, give you gives you an hour to go over the whole team, but then when mo many of the topics he hits don't end up even becoming remotely true, you, you kind of wonder about his vision and his reality versus what his reality versus the real reality. More questions. Let's jump back over to Facebook. And who would your top three candidates be for a baseball coach if Martin was to be let go? Do we try to bring home Link? Do you look at Ramsey? Does Buster Posey want to coach? Uh, I would throw in uh, that uh, – who was it uh, that was up? I'm trying to think of the names that were in the running, guys, uh, at that time. Doug Mankiewicz was also in the running, was he not? Yeah, it wasn't Pedro, yeah. Pedro Grafol? Was, was he mm -hmm. one that was in it? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Link Jarrett's the one everybody wants, obviously. But the problem is the price of business definitely went up. He's had a lot of success now at Notre Dame at a high level. And, uh, you know, so I don't know whether or not it, whenever that time comes, if they have a chance to make a move there. Um, if that's, you know, an option that's on the table, he's definitely, I think number one on most people's list. What about I 11? Did. Bring him back. Yeah. You think he would, you go for that? I, did. What? I mean, that would be, that, you'd make sports center. You'd make like 60 minutes if the son got fired and the dad took back over the old job. Really quickly. I, I think, uh, all jokes aside, what we're getting at here is that, is there any question whatsoever uh, about uh, Meat's position going into next year, assuming he's back, and that is that of a man squarely on the hot seat. Period. Yeah, I don't know how you could be. How how could you not be? Uh, how yeah. could you not be after again? It's not just the records, and it's not just what they're doing in the postseason. It looks the same problems are still here. They will not get. They have not been fixed, and I think that's that's what needs to be addressed quickly. Because again, if they strike out a ton, uh, run the bases like they're nine years old and can't and feel like they're nine years old. Yeah, man, it's a real question of whether like, okay, this, whatever you're trying to teach and instill has not worked and it will not work. Well, and like we touched on earlier, I mean, a lot of these things with a new athletic director, especially, you know, he's being evaluated as well. 
So if, if you go into this offseason, if things don't get fixed, if you give an extension to Mike Martin Jr., but maybe kids that you want to stay in the program don't stay in the program or things kind of start trending in the wrong direction or, uh, you know, next season is, is you know, you just say we need to give him a vote of confidence and then go into next season and it's a disaster or, or goes in the wrong direction. Those things now all reflect on him because he's the AD now. Just like the, you know, Mark Akorian leaving was a was a blow to Michael Alford's esteem because it clearly there was some sort of disconnect between those two. Now he kind of mitigated it some by going and making a really nice hire. He got a very successful coach from an SEC school to come to Florida State. That, you know, he mitigated some of that damage. Keeping on Lonnie Alameda, that's something that people will be very excited about. If basketball continues to do well, all those things, it's like a constant report card. But this is one that, you know, baseball is a big deal at Florida State. People are going to be watching not just how meat does, but how Michael Alford handles it. This is perhaps the best question of the day. My man goes is it Facebook or is it Facebook or Twitter? It is uh it is Twitter. Sorry. It oh, is Twitter. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a stunner. It was a strong week from Twitter. That's why yeah. I just I had to step up for everybody. Uh Ghost Pepper Nate writes <laughs> If the Lightning get to game six, what period does Corey leave in? <laughs> <laughs> The good news for Brady um, is that uh, I'll be in the hotel right across the street, apparently. So I'm not in any rush to beat the traffic. Um, so, yeah, so that's – we'll be there the whole time. And I don't care if they win or lose, so I don't have to turn my head or cover my eyes. I'll just be enjoying the so, enjoying the show. A cu- couple of things. I've been to the uh, hotel that you're staying at across the street numerous times. Secondly, don't you but dare – but, you, on- but you probably didn't pay for it. You were probably comped. No, I pay. I paid for the hotel. I paid for the hotel. Not but the I, tickets, though. Uh, no. Not the tickets, no. Um, uh, no, I, I don't pay for for most things, guys. I've reached the level that's of fame. You know this. I'm not. Why, why, I certainly don't pay that. your taxes. Yeah, <laughs> not on illegal gambling winnings. Right. Uh, now, really quickly, uh, Corey. What I will say is, you cannot blaspheme on this show. You damn well care who wins that game, and you are rooting for the Lightning. Or don't go into that stadium. Buddy, I got, I'm going to have my your ass back to the house and watch it or the hotel. I don't want this. Non- I'm going to have my Martin St. Louis jersey on, buddy. Uh, okay. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. I'm going to I'm going to throw back. No, I, I'm, I'll definitely be rooting for the home team, but I won't be nervous. I will no, tell that's you, what I meant. Yeah. I will tell you, get, get there early, Corey, because the pregame is phenomenal. It's one of the coolest beginnings to any uh, pregame. To do they any do like Zamboni game. tricks? Uh, they no, they do. It's just a really cool presentation. How really. do you even? How do you cheer at a hockey game? Like in baseball, oh, you cheer strikeouts or big hits, double plays. Hockey, like way to slam them in the boards. I mean, like, yeah, what I'll do, do you that. Cheering? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell oh, that out. People, lots of people cheer people being slammed against boards. That's a lot more entertaining than a strikeout. Um, no, I, I would, I'd say yes. That that that's violence. You cheer violence in mass, uh, gotcha. and you celebrate taunt, like you're at the Coliseum. Much Igor, the way you I'll, I'll taunt their their goalie. Igor is his name. Uh, I and think. nobody taunts. There's no real taunting. Uh, there is a celebration well, of violence. There is a celebration of goals. There is a celebration okay. of uh, r- excellent play, like it is in any other sport. Hey, like um, like we we said before that Mike Norvell is going to live a lifetime before he he gets over that Jacksonville State game. Corey, at what point do you think you'll get over the embarrassment of leaving that Braves game? Like, what? It's what? Like, how many? How many? Like, what's going to have to happen for you to live that down? Because that's well, that's is that more buddy. embarrassing or me not watching it? All, one single pitch of them winning the World Series, like me, yeah. me watching a Jake Gyllenhaal movie maybe it's, where he's a maybe it's the whole performance. Maybe it's, it's I all, think it's all the totality of it is completely embarrassing. But again, I feel in the losing the money, betting against my team, lots of money I lost the whole the whole month. That whole two-week stretch uh, was not Corey Clark's finest hour, but I got a championship out of it, Ira. You know what, though? If you do win some money in blackjack, you can write off the loss from the, your Braves sure. series. So I, I did figure out why I asked situation. that. Uh, I was at Cherokee Casino with my buddy playing that craps game I was telling you about, which is uh, bubble craps where you're hitting a button to roll the dice. And on my roll, I rolled like 36 straight times, and he won like twenty-seven or $2,900 just at that machine. Mm. And so when he got his ticket, they wouldn't let him cash out. Yeah, they had no. to, he had to come over and sign something, sign a yeah, form, because he had yeah, won that kind to, of money. Yeah, you'd have to reconcile it. Yeah. Brandon writes, do you feel that every fan base overreacts at every little thing like the FSU fan base does? No matter the sport, it is only bad or burn it to the ground. No other options. <laughs> Probably. I will say this, as, as, a, a, as a fringe member, I'm not even a member of the UGA fan base necessarily. 
I dip my toe in occasionally. Yeah. Um, the, with their reaction losing to Alabama in the SEC championship game uh, dwarfs any any reaction to an FSU baseball loss. I mean, it was over the top. Like, he's never going to beat them. He keeps starting this bum at quarterback. They've well, got no chance. Uh, Kirby's never going to win. Hold on. That was that kind was of a fair. That was... <laughs> well, There's sure, but, like, it ended up working out all right. Yeah. Right. And and that reaction that day, and I was even telling my friends, well, like, man, they're going to play him again. Like, the, the, right. this, the game didn't matter for Georgia at all. They knew they were in. Alabama had to win. It will be different. And let's hope one or both of their ba their badass receivers get hurt. And they did. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There's a championship for you, baby. Yeah, I, I, I understand, though, in a weird way, Georgia's frustrations – in losing that game and just losing period after years and years of building to that point and thinking that it was going to elude them again, I could understand the desperation and irrationality. Georgia, more than most programs, had had this very hoity belief that they were an elite program with zero evidence to prove it. Right, right. And, and so they were tired of having to hear the justifiable retorts from their SEC brethren or really football elite company all over the country saying, would you stop, Georgia? You act like you've ever done anything. Yeah. Herschel Walker was a long time ago. Jesus. So that's why people were ripping Georgia. That's why Georgia fans felt so fed but it, up. It was that game was an odd time to do it because it didn't really matter. The, the, the main goal was still out there, and you still had a very good chance of, of getting But to, to answer the question, I do believe that almost every passionate fan base of any team, program, franchise, you name it, are all irrational. I, I have discovered that over the years that none of them – are fair-minded in any way, shape, or form. Ira, yeah, it's I like mean, me with the Lightning. Like, when they lost those first two games up in New York, I was through. I'm like, I'm you, not cheering for these boys anymore. These are these guys are bums. You burned a jersey you just bought last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah. Uh, but no, but but I, no, I, I think it's, it's, it is universal. But I think what's a little bit unique with Florida State is Florida State does have a, for whatever reason, seems to have a bigger, more active Twitter presence than a lot of fan bases. And so it's not just contained to your message boards. Uh, it's it's in, on Twitter for everybody. And I think that – So and again, like we see it. Anytime there's a Twitter poll, Florida State usually wins it. Best mascot, whatever uh, whatever it is, best traditions. Florida State's Twitter – FSU Twitter is a thing, and I think that exacerbates it where everything's magnified. But, yeah, man, it's, I think it's the same with every fan base. Eric writes, Jeff, enough time has passed that I can reveal that I was your mole in 2008 that helped you break the news that Tavares Presley was, in fact, enrolled at FSU. Mm. We all remember where we were when that news hit, don't we? Ooh. Jokes yeah. aside, Program how changer. do you guys maintain your sources with turnover and regime changes? Ira? Yeah, and no, I mean, it's a, that is definitely a challenge. I mean, it people, uh, you know, and it's certainly, uh, you know, in a, in a program like Florida State, you know, you've got so many different people that are involved. There's so many people around the program that have been around the program uh, that maybe don't work for the university. So that helps to some degree. Um, you know, if there's, you know, longtime fans, supporters, donors, different people like that. Um, but it's, yeah, that's a challenge. I mean, when Florida State for a long time had the same administration, same head coaches for most of the sports. So it, it was easier. Uh, but once you start having that turnover, it definitely becomes tougher. But I, I do think the fact that we've been in the market for so long helps. You know, people will. I mean, while we're on this show, uh, some, a guy just DM me, somebody who's in the chat, DMing me with information about the baseball situation because, you know. Who, what was us. it? Who was it and what did he say? Uh, he oh, we don't do that, right? We don't reveal some, that? Some, you know, I mean, well, it's just based on what we uh, – I mean, mm. we got to verify it. But, you know. Also, some, Ira, some, make sure not only in addition to telling us his name, uh, please give that phone number so that I can reach out to him, but do so publicly here so that we yeah, can get confirmation yeah. of some of the things I'm here as well. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, that's part of it as well. But, yeah, that's, it changed uh, turnover definitely. Yeah, you can also fun. pay sources, right, Ira? That's something we, we've started doing at War Channel. We pay For sure. $100 a tip. For those that don't get sarcasm, that has not happened. We're not doing that. <laughs> not we're, not paying, we're not paying anybody for that. Uh, I would also say that the interest, and, and I think it's to your point about being in the market for as long as we have, we, we do get presented with a lot of stuff, and there is a lot of tracking down information uh, or following up on information um, just because, obviously, we do have a platform and uh, people do reach out because they trust that we're going to do the right thing with it. But and it's always it, – it, it's, a, it's a fun balance, right, because you can hear some pretty damn interesting things. You're like, well, if that's true, 
<laughs> yeah. But yeah. They, yeah, most of the time it's not, or there's a different variation of what I just heard. Um, all right. Well, I will say the, the, the craziest time, and we've talked about before, but just the craziest time ever was the, you know, we were about to record and, and we started hearing things about Jameis. Jameis. I mean, that was uh that was a, that was a, uh, a difficult, do we did the show? No, I think we still did. The, do we scrap no. it? We scrapped no, it. I, I was on my way and you made me go tell Jeff That's what right. the, what the, what the news was going to be. So, yeah. Uh, but that was when we used I, to record the show, but yeah, now right. we're live. So we can't, uh, I will say, and it's a fun peek into how we do it. We only have a few minutes left in the show today. Um, it is weird because there are several times we've been on the air where something of significance, maybe not salacious, sometimes salacious, but usually something of major significance that does happen. There was the seminal headline curse that lasted yes. for a very, very long time. Yes. Yeah. And some of the times the thing that was going to break mere minutes after we finished recording was something that was sent to us in the midst of the final right. seven minutes of the show. We'd done the whole damn thing. And you're like, well, now what do we do here? We, and it would make it irrelevant. To... It would make yeah. it irrelevant what we had just talked about. Well, and that's why we made uh, you know reference to the Seminole Headlines curse for a while there. It was amazing. We were like, okay, this is great. We'll just do a show. If we want something to break, just do a show. Schedule a show. <laughs> it was definitely the recording part maximized it because we would record in the mornings and then it would air in the afternoon. Your show used to be three to six. Well, you know, it was in the afternoon. Um, so, and sometimes we would, the show would run sometimes in the last two hours, like four to six or whatever, but we recorded it in the morning. So was, there was that window of time for the curse to really get us, uh, now doing it live, at least we could react to it. If something happens. That's right. Show. That's right. Gary writes, Jeff, nice shirt. Thank you, Gary. I agree. He writes, talk me off the, talk me off the edge guys. Top 10 would be nice, but they really need a top five recruiting class to be a playoff bound team. I don't think eight to nine wins this year helps them crack that top 10. It just feels like a seven to eight win program in perpetuity. Well, first of all, Gary, I'd like to win eight games for a couple yeah. years in a row. That would just be, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That'd be a big start right there. Let's get to that eight win plateau there that you think we're stuck on. Let's get there first. Um, secondly, if you start winning games, your ability to recruit top 10 classes is readily available because of where you're located. It's the distinct advantage that Florida State has always had. Several schools do in the Southeast, but that that is a, a huge advantage. It's why you're not going to be mired necessarily in this um, ass sorry set of results year in and year out if you can just get it going. And that's why we're all sitting here hoping like hell that he gets this thing going because I do think it opens the door to a couple of pretty good recruiting classes. And then all of a sudden you got the ball rolling. We've all see how it works. Uh, you know, winning seasons beget winning seasons beget winning seasons and great recruiting classes. And then wait till our influx of that Spanx money when she dies and we get that 500 million each. Well, we probably shouldn't curse it by mentioning that we need her to die for this to happen. She's a relatively yeah, young she lady. Just, she could just just give the money. Cut us a check. Yeah, she'd be fine with that. She doesn't have to. She doesn't have to die. We're probably not in her will right now. The one, uh, the one, uh, just following up on what Jeff was saying though. But I do think what you're looking for is you got to have that class that kind of turns it around. And if you look at her historically at Florida State athletic, Florida State football, it was that Odell Hagen's class. Um, you know, the class that Jameis and Mario Edwards and those guys, sometimes a class comes together where a bunch of dudes all want to go to the same school and that kind of gets things going. You know, last year they had some pretty big time players, Julian Armella, Lazare Thomas, Sam McCall. I mean, there's some, I mean, they love Omar Graham, those young offensive linemen. That could have been the class. And then if you can have a good success this season, maybe that carries over to a higher level class this coming year. So they also had, I don't know if you remember, they had a kid that was ranked really, really high in the country that had been committed for a while and he didn't end up showing up. Which... Don't recall. Don't recall. Oh, y'all don't. Oh, okay. I don't, Next I can't headlines, recall. His name. Corey, we're running out of time. Next headlines. <laughs> okay. I'd like you to yeah, big sorry. reveal. Right. The big reveal sure. next Tuesday. Perfect. I can't so remember his name anyway. I have to go look it up. For uh, Corey and Ira, I'm Jeff. Our thanks to Director Matthew and all of you. We'll talk to you next time. Be well, everybody. Peace.